In this video, I want to show you how to replace an Axis aluminum base plate for a 16 millimeter mast. I replaced from the stock part made of aluminum from a 3D printed one made of a nylon carbon fiber matrix. So I've already done this previously with the fuselage of my foil. So I've already shown you how can I replace my uh, fuselage here by a 3D printed part. I had a really uh, great success into trying it. I felt it really stiff. I want to see to what extent I could do the same with a base plate that would connect to the mass because I found that this piece from Axis is especially heavy at around 600 grams. So I wanted to see, can I do something that is going to be much lighter and possibly much uh, as stiff uh, when riding. So I went with a first design where I add a little bit of a wider part. I wanted to take no chance here to have something that is going to be uh, very strong and I could ride it. And already this one is about 230 grams. And I must tell you when riding, I couldn't feel it at all. I couldn't feel any additional flex compared to the aluminum part. Uh, this is probably not as strong as the aluminum one, but it's definitely strong enough to ride. Uh, but I could do some stuff better. Okay, first I made it really wide compared to the original Axis one But even if it was really wide even when I was touching the water I couldn't feel really additional drag compared to the Axis or to my Nolimits base plate. Basically the feeling was the same. It doesn't mean because I couldn't feel it There's no difference. So I decided to go and make some improvement by narrowing down the profile and that required me to thicken the plate a little bit compared to my original design. So the base here, since I have longer section here, I made a little thicker to keep the stiffness. <clears throat> and overall, it feels really, really stiff. So if we can look a little more closely at the design, you can see here, this is the same 3D model for the base plate I've shown you. So you see that the, the, the the edges are chamfered to try to minimize the resistance to the water. Even if in the bigger part, I couldn't feel it. I tried to still get the most of what we can do. This is a fairly wider profile than the axis, but not by much. And in terms of riding feel, I couldn't feel the additional drag brought by this extra width. If we try to look at this piece, if we look at the inside, so the inside is completely hollowed in order to try to shave some weight. So you see here, this kind of triangular profile goes all around the way so it can save some weight. And these two holes here, both in the standard 60 millimeter uh, aluminum mass, these are 60 millimeters apart. So overall, the piece here weights about 208 gram compared to 600 gram for the original axis part. So this is almost a factor three saving in terms of weight. So saving 400 weight, uh, 500 grams might not seem like much, but you can do these savings in multiple places in the foil. So overall, if you keep adding up these 200, 400, 600 gram saving, at the end, you're saving kilograms over the overall weight of the foil. So it does really matter. It does makes a difference. So in the process of 3D printing, this is a process that is inherently fairly slow. I'm using the PACF12 from Polymaker. This is the nylon matrix with carbon fibers, micro carbon fiber strand into it. And this prints like this layer by layer. So this is a fairly slow process that here takes about 13 hours and a half total, where it goes from the bottom part and really builds slice by slice into it. You can see here, we see the hollowed out section all around it. And this builds up all the way to the top. So you can see here, this is the section. If we look back at how it goes, you see here how the inner part is all hollowed out. So this is for the uh, 3D printed itself. So once mounted on the board, it looks exactly the same, bolts into standard track. And this is made for, especially the length of the base plate. This was taught for the future fins 10.75 uh, track length to be compatible with the slot you use in the mid span of the track in order to insert the bolt. 
And <clears throat> while riding, I could really not see any difference. I don't have specific footage showing me riding because you couldn't see anything anyway. But I rode it for about 10 hours. And so far, I could feel no difference. If I would have to do a blind test to see a difference between these base plates and the full aluminum one, honestly, I couldn't tell the difference. So the, I couldn't tell the difference, to be honest, in terms of the weight at all, but just in the cumulative weight of my original foil with this one, I can really see the difference. In terms of feeling, either in terms of drag or flex, I couldn't see any difference at all. So I did also some destructive tests. So on this one, I broke it. So I decided to test here without any bolts into the mast. So just inserting the mast here and flexing it. So I could, after really heavy deformation of the mast, I could break this one without any bolts in here. I didn't dare to break it with the bolts in because I was afraid that I would bend the mast. But in terms of stiffness while riding, I saw really no issue and I have a high confidence of riding with this. It still has to uh, go through the test of time. I just have limited testing made into it, but as I've shown you previously as well, this material is pretty uh, ductile, so it can sustain large deformation. So not at all with the bolts in to have it snapping. And these, this material will bend excessively before breaking. So it's not gonna snap and I'm not afraid of losing my uh, foil. But again, I'll need to test it more extensively to see how it works. But if you want to try it for your, uh, yourself, I'll put the 3D uh, CADs in the link to the video. And it just basically, once you print it, you can directly bolt it straight into the mask with the existing M8 screws that are 16, uh, 16 millimeters apart on the edge. And at the end, the finished product, this is not e even without any sanding or anything. This is how it gets. It's a little bit like rough, but overall uh, this part looks fairly good. And again, it saves around 400 grams on the foil. This part is really heavy. We can cut uh, by almost a factor three its weight. So this is one more step into the process of saying, I'm gonna, I, I wanna build a complete foil that's going to be really uh, maneuverable, that's going to be really uh, light, and that's going to allow to maximize the, its potential. So now I've already done the fuse, now I have progress with the base plate, the next place, the next step will be to do a mast so that we can have a complete foil that is going to be at the same time light and stiff.